Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Laura Clays from Planta Moran, and with me today is my fellow partner, Nevra Krieger. And we're pleased to be here to present the results of the June 30, 2020 financial statement audit for the district. If you give us just one moment, Nevra is going to share her screen with you. And while she's doing that, um, we did meet with the FFLA committee uh, in the past week or so to discuss the year-end financial results, and today we'll be covering a graph highlight for you. Uh, next slide, Navra. Just from an overall key audit highlights, as you know, included in your board packet, you received a copy of the June 30, 2020 basic financial statements, as well as the federal program audit, a letter to the Board of Education with some informational items for your review. And today we'll be talking about the basic financial statements. Um, in addition to the uh, basic financial statement audit, which we rendered an unmodified or clean opinion. So that's the highest form of assurance that you can get as an administration and as a community. And it indicates that we're not aware of any changes that need to be made to your financial statements in order for them to be issued in accordance with the accounting regulations. So congratulations there. And congratulations as well for the district on the receipt of the ASBO Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting for your June 30, 2019 financial report. It's always a year in arrears. You have uh, organizations from outside the state of Michigan review your report and make sure that all of the required elements are included. And for districts such as yours, you include a lot more statistical and historical information than other districts might. And that allows you to receive that Certificate of Excellence. So that kudos to the business office, uh, Ms. Fantastic and Ms. Hildebrandt for the work that they've done to pull that together and to all of you for investing the time for that. And it allows the community to learn a lot more about the district than they might normally. Um, as you can also see on the slide there, we did do a federal program audit and the programs we tested this year were the child nutrition cluster as well as your special education cluster. And we hadn't tested child nutrition in quite some time, but given the fact that you received emergency funding due to COVID, uh, that became a program that we needed to audit and we're happy to report that for all the programs that we tested, we had no findings and no question costs. And then finally, we would like to uh, congratulate all of you on the passage of the bond. Uh, you did issue $94 million of that bond series after the year end or after June 30, 2020. We did disclose that in the financial statements and we know you have plenty of projects that will be headed your way for the community. So with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Navra to walk you through the financial highlights for the year. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Great to be with you all tonight. Um, okay, so this first graph represents your general fund revenue. And so as you can see, your local sources are at 43%, which this is primarily made up of your property taxes. Um, and then the, the biggest portion represents your state at 48%. And so this is your state's, um, the state's portion of the foundation allowance, as well as some uh, categoricals. And the one thing I wanted to note, what is included in here is 6.5 million of revenue that you receive from the state, and then you have to immediately turn around and pay it into the retirement system. So it's a really a in and out um, for the district. Um, and then your federal revenues are made up primarily of your special education funding, and then your inner district and other revenues represent your Act 18 amounts that you receive from um, Oakland schools. Now switching gears to the expenditure side of things, this graph represents your general fund expenditures of about 92 million um, by function. And so the largest piece um, as you would expect, relates to instructional and instructional support at about 72%. Um, and then as a reminder, the 6.5 uh, million that I mentioned on the previous slide is included in your expenditures here. And then all the rest of the department expenditures are consistent with the prior year. So then this next graph looks at those same expenditures, but by object. So in other words, how you spend those funds. And so as expected, the majority of your expenditures are spent on salaries and benefits of about 84.5%, um, which again is consistent with, with the previous year. Now this next graph represents your general fund fund balance. So what happened um, during the year? So the difference between your revenues and your expenditures resulted in an increase of fund balance of about 476,000, uh, bringing your fund balance to 20.8 million as of June 30, 2020. 
And so then the fund balance is broken up into three different components this year. You have your non-spendable amounts, um, which would be your prepaid assets. Um, you have your assigned amount, which that amount this year represents the budgeted use of fund balance in fiscal year 21. Um, which you adopted back in June of uh, 2020. And then the, re then the remaining amount is unassigned. So then this next graph um, represents the district's portion of the retirement expense or the MIPSERS expense and really is the trend over the past 10 years. So as you can see, this expense is a significant expense to the district and has increased um, over time. Now, with the MIPSERS expense, the district does receive an offset from the state. So that 6.5 million that I had, I had mentioned. Um, so, so there is, so it is being supplemented. Um, and as you can see, the, the percentages, they have grown year over year, and the state does anticipate the same trajectory into future years in terms of this percentage continuing to grow. And so what the slide also represents or provides is what that gross amount of that contribution is, as well as the net amount that the state is helping supplement um, some of that cost. So in closing, you know, the district continues to operate well um, and is organizationally sound. Um, your financial results are, you know, the result of excellent collaboration between all the district, all the departments within the district, your strong community support, um, and having open dialogue about financial matters, and really the district's continued focus with that long-term vision. So while your 2020-2021 um, foundation allowance has been set, school funding continues to remain uncertain uh, during this pandemic. And so really just that continued focus on that fiscally responsible, thoughtful decision-making um, with that long-term vision will, will be key. So again, to echo uh, Laura's comments, we'd like to thank Tina and Karen and the entire business office. They were well prepared for the audit, uh, which we did perform virtually and we encountered no difficulties. Thank you. Thanks. Um... Uh, Laura and your team um, for this report. Thanks to Tina and Karen uh, for doing a great job and getting the awards. Um, just looking in the chat, I know Howard, you had a question? Hey, yes, President Cullen. Um, Never, could you go back to slide three for a second? Absolutely. Okay. Um, in the intra district and transfers of the 6.1 million, you mentioned, I think, Act 18. Could you explain what Act 18 is? Sure. So, oh, you want to go, Laura? Oh, God. Um, so, that's the money that you receive from Oakland schools um, to run the, the center program. Oh, okay. Very good. Um, so, and then if you could go to slide six for a second. Okay, I just wanted to point out if um, if everyone looks at the uh, the second number on the right hand column where it says change in uh, a year change in fund balance four hundred seventy five thousand, uh, that's a revenues are higher than expenses, meaning in kind of like a business, you know, it's a profit, and given that this is uh, during the one of the low points of COVID, um, if anyone's been following what's been going on in Lansing and Washington, D.C., uh, there were huge problems that um, all school districts in the country or in the state were thinking that we were going to get about a $700 per student cut in our uh, revenues coming out of our what's called the foundation allowance, which is the amount of money that we get from the state legislature. And uh, there was a lot of change that occurred over August and September, which allowed us to uh, actually end up with a, you know, not losing money, but actually having an, a positive uh, improvement for the 2019-20 fiscal year of about a half a million dollars. Um, we also are, uh, it, it sounds like we're being held harmless also for the 2020-21 school year. 2021, 2022 for the next year is a little bit up in the air still, but just so everyone realizes that um, there was a huge amount of doom and gloom over the summer. And um, what uh, what plant Moran is telling us here is that we ended up 
just fine for the fiscal year that wrapped up in uh, June of 2020. Thanks, Howard. Anything else? Okay, with that, uh, again, thank you, Laura and your team. You're welcome to stay on. You're welcome to drop off. Um, thanks for everything you're doing for our district.